You can see uh, this bus driver here that was uh, produced with a program called Wombo on the um, on the iPhone iPad format, uh, was my first uh, exposure to IR uh, infrared art, and uh, these are this is a Mid Journey book, or actually got this through Kindle, and you can produce well, you can produce it pretty much anything you can imagine with uh, Mid Journey. And so I'm starting to experiment with a lot of AI art. And uh, so I was watching a documentary on, um, on Bernie Madoff. And they exposed a little bit more of it that I didn't understand. was that Bernie had a group of people that were producing um, fake um, records of stock trading that didn't exactly occur days after they had uh, taken the money in so that they could um, make the people who were putting their money into Bernie's uh, personal um, personal uh, I guess he was doing uh, uh, He had two businesses, and one was stock trading, the other one was um, a, uh, a a fund that he had, a mutual fund or something that he was doing on the side, and that was the thing that um, was supposedly making money, but was really a Ponzi scheme in, in behind it all. And he didn't, um, he had a group of people in an office that didn't include his sons, it was this special group of people that were faking all of the stock trades. So there were no stock trades at all, they were completely fake stock trades. And they would print up all the results of these stock trades and send them to all of the people that had their money in his special, um, his special Ponzi scheme, which they didn't know was a Ponzi scheme. And whenever the whole thing blew up as a result of the uh, stock market bubble um, on on uh, the um, the subprime uh, lending and all that stuff and the mortgages and that came up in the late 2000s um, or mid to late 2000s, that just um, that just lit the fuse of the uh, power keg which was um, Bernie Madoff's whole system that had been in works for a long time that had, people had invested billions of dollars in and um, revealed that it was a Ponzi scheme. And then uh, as a result of that, a whole bunch of stuff, I mean, a whole bunch of people lost money. And uh, a result of that was that they got lawyers to try to get the money back that was that possibly was still there from the people that had originally bought into the ponzi scheme because of the guys that because what ponzi scheme does is it takes it, it um um it um pays paul it steals from mary to pay paul you know that that idea is what what it does is it takes the money in and it um and it gives the returns to the, to the people that had originally bought into the scheme. And um, it increases, it multiplies over time. And as a result of that, it makes it easier to pay off the people that first started into it. But um, it can only keep going as long as more people come into it. But it, uh, it all it's doing is it's just restrict redistributing the wealth from one end to the other um the others are getting this fantastic return the others are uh the the, the people that are coming in are investing lots of money and so um the money doesn't really get lost it gets redistributed and um it gets lost eventually because those people end up spending the money elsewhere so it's 
kind of like Bernie Madoff is Robin Hood. He's stealing from the rich and giving to the poor, in a way. Um, it's really stealing from the rich and giving to other rich, you know. Uh, people that started investing in it um, a long time ago are getting the money from other people. Nothing is really, there is no trades. It's just, um, you know, the idea is to keep the, uh, the keep the lie going and how it originally started was that he had uh, he was trying to um, trying to gain on uh, well you can watch the documentary it's on Netflix but the thing is is that that I took away with it all was that um, it was fueled by greed and in the end, the greed really, uh, people tried to do clawbacks that was trying to get back the money that um, other people had taken away from them. So they called it a reverse Ponzi scheme and that it was, um, it was trying to get, <laughs> it was trying to reverse the flow of the money so that the people that originally invested in it could get out of it with something and uh, it treated the first investors um, unfair in that these people had already um, used up a lot of the money and part of that was going to the IRS because there was taxes on it that they had to collect. And so how do you get the money back from the IRS was one of the questions. <laughs> and so um, it really just, the whole thing just revealed how, um, you know, it really, though you could really blame a lot of it on Bernie Madoff, um, what really made it work was people's greed and people's, people's need to, I mean, people were overlooking the, just how much it didn't make sense. They were not questioning it enough. And so it was more, um, an exposure of just how stupid people were, how uh, gullible people were in um, thinking that somebody had a leg up on the crowd. And I kind of do that in, uh, that's something to pay attention to in general is that um, of all the things that people try to pull the wool over your eyes, the thing to do is to look around and see what's happening to everybody else. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't, uh, if it seems like it's too good to be true, it, it probably is. Because, um, because things don't usually, it's very rare that things come onto the scene by a, a, a small group of people and then, great, then uh, quickly become large. It might do that with the AI art program. Uh, if a lot of people shun it, then there's going to be a small group. They're going to benefit from it until everybody starts uh, adopting it. But um, there's these all these get-rich-quick schemes you see on YouTube that claim to have a leg up on everybody. And that can't possibly be because um, you would see it elsewhere. I mean, people are not... It just, everybody's going to have the same experience no matter what. And um, those who think they're going to, they can get around it quickly um, and, and are not smart enough to understand the more complex stuff in the world, they're either going to, they're either going to be really, they're, they're going to be suckers for somebody else to take advantage of. And so whenever you, when you're most vulnerable is when you are super open-minded and accepting of anything um, without researching it. You know, if you don't go and, you know, there's, there's a great little AI program now called ChatGPT. And you can ask it questions, and I've asked it questions about 
my video my favorite video game and it had some and it gave me some good answers to those and so you could probably ask chat gpt about um get rich quick schemes that you've heard about and it might be able to to um, uh, give you some insight on that um it's a to me, the ai um world is going to they're going to have fakers and then there's going to be people that really have interesting AI um, programs like the AI art, the mid journey um, software. I, I started playing around with an AI art program. It was called an AI art program on, uh, on the iPhone or on iPad. And it was a piece of shit. And it was, it didn't seem like it was using any AI algorithms to produce its art. It looked like what it was doing was just taking images and compositing them together. Um, but Mid Journey is the real deal. And Wombo is somewhere between the two. Um, uh, Wombo is a fairly cheap. And I think of all the AI programs I've messed around, Wombo still has some, has some uh, value to it. Like you can put in an image of somebody and then you can tell it, I want a celebrity's face on that. And it will put a celebrity's face in place of where that person's face is. So it does have some value. Um, and But it but it can't do what Midjourney can, which is taking an image of somebody and put that person's face on somebody else in an, in an image. So I can, I can take my image and put it in place of any celebrity um, with inside of Midjourney. And it will look really, really good. Um, and it can do it in a bunch of styles, like it can make it look like a cartoon or make it look like pixel art or whatever it is that you want to do. And I've done things like I've said, okay, I want a, uh, I want um, an, a, a picture done by Escher and Geiger. And I come out with something that just looks super fantastic. Um, let's see if I, I've got some on my, my iPad here so you can see kind of what this art looks like. Um, the only problem with this is it's got a lot of porn on it. And I've been making AI porn. Uh, let's see if I can find something. Uh, the best thing to do is to go to my Mid Journey account and look through the gallery there. That way I don't have to go through my own gallery. And so what I have to do first is... Well, this is the best way to do it is to go to my um, alert window and uh, find a single image. And then from that, I can go to my web gallery. It's just the way I get there. there there's probably a faster way of doing it, but. Okay, let's see. So I get it. Yeah. Come on, go there. Okay. Right. And so you can see this is all art that I've created with Mid Journey. And this one was free to Kahlo and a chicken. And it and it looks like free to Kahlo and a chicken. These were create, made from separating the word uni from corn. So uni corn, that's a uh, a, a cyclops uh, cob of corn. And uh, you can see, let me turn off the light because uh, I'll turn it down just a little bit here. That, that will, uh, so you can see the. This is a actress. Her name is Seong Seong So. She's in the oh, damn. She's in the um, the name of the show is called Kaleidoscope. It's on Netflix, and I saw her, and I was re really super attracted attracted to her, and so I used her image in Mid Journey. I just gave it one image, and it was able to do a lot with it. Um, this one is a com combination of her face and a 
porn star that I really liked from private. Her name was um, Eliza. Was her name Eliza Rusk? And so I mixed Eliza Rusk with Seon Seo Jung's So's face, and I got this lady here. And this is an Indian, an American Indian version of Seong So's face. And uh, all I'm doing is I'm just looking through the gallery that, um, oh, it just, I'm looking through the gallery that, um, that um, Mid Journey produces whenever you do, do your tests. And so this one right here is an Escher. I said, uh, give me Escher's um, uh, Invisible Friends when Escher was young. And so it sh shows all these children running through his crazy um, world or whatever. And uh, more of the Seong songs. This is the um, cartoonized version of Sever Face. And uh, attractive ones and like really funny ones and stuff like that. And there's Dua Lipa. I asked it to do Dua Lipa and it came up with that. This was um, me trying the um, uh, childhood friend thing with um, uh, uh, Stanley Kubrick. And... Uh, then I wanted to make a pinball game based on some, uh, forgot what the influence was for the pinball game, but I said that. And then Crazy Climber versions of, modern versions of Crazy Climber, the lead singer to B50, B-52s. Um, sometimes I would just take images that other people were producing with Mid Journey and I would, uh, do, like somebody was doing a swimming uh, bison and I was trying to make it look uh, more interesting sometimes I would take if there was a female face in the image I would tell it to uh, put this what I was trying to do here was I was trying to um, get these female to hold up the n numbers that their faces represented uh, in my um, prefers uh, option set uh, uh, setting which is a way of uh, making aliases for a set of words you might put in your prompt. And so I have about 21 beautiful ladies that I can call up through um, small aliases inside my prompts. And I was trying to get that um, set up so that I could figure out which, uh, which aliases came to what pictures. And it's probably just gonna, and it screwed up and I don't know what the screw up was, but it ended up them holding um, holding little crystal globes with the picture of some other lady in it. Um, this is a cartoonized version of the lead singer to Crash Test Dummies and David Byrne. And uh, all I did is just give him one image and it knew what to, to do with it. The only thing I can imagine is, is that the, uh, well, there we got Kathy Ireland. Um, but all... The only thing I can imagine that it's doing is, um, all I can imagine that it's doing really is it's, um, is it's, um, it's got all this stuff already in its database and I'm just giving it images that, that it already knows of who it is that I'm trying to produce. Like, this is obviously the lead singer from Crash Test Dummies. And, uh, but anyhow, that's, that's what Mid Journey can do. And the cost for it is between 20 and $30. Well, it's $15, um, is the normal price. Then there is a $30 one. And then for $20 more, you can get, um, a private feature that will permit you to hide your prompts from other people because normally, it runs within Discord, and in Discord, you write a, a prompt out, and everybody can see the result of your image. You can even steal off of other people. It's a lot of fun. Uh, people, other people may not like it, but uh, what it does is it it um, 
forces people to be creative and to learn the software, which is the real intent. But the other is, is to moderate what people produce so that nobody's producing something that it's against the policies of the community. And so um, the way I see it is that AI art is not, it isn't something that's going to place artists. It's not really because you can't really get what you want out of it. So it's not a tool you, that you can use to create art that you want to create. Um, what it is, is it's a collaboration between you and the AI program. Um, and the AI program's got the collection of all the art that exists in history. And then there's you that is collaborating with it because you're telling it what you want to see. And then as a result of that collaboration, you produce something. And from that, it's up to you to determine what looks good and what doesn't. And you can take those images and go off and sell them. And, um, and um, you, can, you can put NFTs on them and take ownership of them. And so it's um, pretty fantastic. And eventually, I'm, I'm starting to mess around with a music program, which I don't think is AI at all. That's just... A, clever program called demo on the iPad um, and I hope to see more art uh, more music programs that think a little more outside of the box on how to produce songs um, because um, because I, it's more daunting whenever you look at what people used to make music with and um, it should be a lot easier to to churn out um, songs by just um, using something like a like an old Casio keyboard with a with a chord a one finger chord or a multi finger chord and some drum patterns but make it much more easier in that you don't have to use a score you can use some measure system and um, tell how many times you want this or that and uh, it does those sort of things. The only problem with this is, it is like the AI art program that I said was a complete wash. Um, that program crashes and so this, this song program crash. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but I, I saw that Bernie Madoff. Then I saw a, a YouTube video about the origins of disco. And supposedly that it all started... Um, as a result of the um, the battle in New York uh, be, um, between the cops and the gay community and that disco was a, a way for gay people to escape the um, harsh realities of not being accepted by people um, uh, I didn't for instance that supposedly it was um it was um, the government was actually cracking down on gay people. I was just like, you know, and then, you know, the, the disco supposedly came out of that. When I was a kid, I didn't see any of that. The disco came, um, came to light whenever I was like seven, eight, or nine. 1979, I was nine, you know. So, I, to me, disco is just a style of music. And uh, it wasn't, it didn't mean anything uh, in particular. And I didn't see that there was any problem with it. I actually kind of liked it. And now I'm liking to seeing it uh, coming back as just a style of music, not a, not a uh, movement or political or a, or a sexual uh, revolution or a hedonistic uh, lifestyle or any of that kind of stuff or, you know. Um, but it was interesting to see the, see the documentary and this small documentary this person made on YouTube. I think that's probably the best use of YouTube is the creation of insightful documentaries and explanations for content, even if they're probably could be faked with a program like Mid Journey, you know, or or, or some video program that some deep faking program. Um, It'll be interesting if somebody comes up some documentaries 
using uh, images that are deep fake that are deep faked or mid journeyed. Um, I mean, I could do something like that and say even even the they even got into VR back in the disco era. You know, <laughs> somebody did that. They they made a photo of early '70s kids being first uh, introduced to VR, and so they had all these VR headsets on, and they're all like going wow and everything. And it's in a Polaroid uh, look. They they even made it look like Kodachrome film or like a Polaroid, like somebody had taken a Polaroid of it, and uh, which which made it seem more realistic, but it was actually a fake. And uh, Mid Journey is one of those programs that. Uh, until you play around with it, you don't realize just how much, how um, how far along uh, artificial intelligence is, and so a lot of the artists that are dealing with Mid Journey, because Discord has a voice chat system, and voice and video chat, you can go and talk to the people that are using it, and I have been, and they're really there. Are, uh, several of them are saying your your job is over with the AI's going to take it all over this the end of the you know end of the world for art and i've been playing with the program and i'm like no you can't control this this is more of a collaboration than this is a tool that you can use or a tool that can uh, that can do away with artists because artists can express themselves directly and precise the ai art can't um and it doesn't do it with any amount of understanding of what the heck it's working with so you can ask it to do something but then you'll find objects in the image that make absolutely no sense and it's because the ai doesn't have the capacity to reason or understand what the objects are that it's using it's just it um for instance if i ask it to to create an image of freddie mercury or some art of freddie mercury it has this tendency to want to put a microphone in front of his face because the AI has seen a lot of images of Freddie Mercury with a microphone. And so to it, it assumes that there's always a microphone in front of Freddie's face. Somebody tells me you can get rid of it by using an option that tells it no, no microphone, take the microphone out. But that's, that's the thing is that um, if there's something that's unrecognizable that it marries to somebody's image, and you don't know what it is, then, and it doesn't know what it is, there's no way you're going to be able to remove it from the image. And so, it's, there's always flaws in programs, even AI programs, there's going to be flaws. It's not reliable, and so, because it's not reliable, it's not going to do away with anybody's job. Um, people are, just need to experiment with it, uh, before getting afraid or fearful of it, you know, you need to mess around with it to realize what it can do and it can't do. And in that, you'll determine what it is that you can do that it can't do, and where you can develop your your um, you can make money or you can develop your style. And uh, um, a big problem right now in the AI art is the images they use to train the models on um, are copyrighted. And so um, Stable Diffusion, which is the open source freeware version uh, of VR art programs, um, is having to retrain their models on non-copyrighted material because... Um, it's produce it's producing stuff that looks more like copyrighted material and if it does then it could take down that whole movement of software and so they're removing it's like the older versions of stable diffusion look better whenever you're trying to call up somebody's image um, but the newer versions you they look like cartoon cartoons like within mid journey i'll ask for dua lipa now in version four and i get a cartoon version of her and i i don't get somebody that looks 3d although i could think i could get it to do that um it's it's a concern and so stable diffusion has taken it out and i think mid journey is probably going to take out more of their copyrighted content 
because you can call up any celebrity um, in Mid Journey and it will draw a picture of them perfectly. Um, and you can you can call up multiple celebrities and it'll mix all their faces together whenever you didn't even want that. It'll it'll you know when you want it uh, when you say um, uh, Freddie Mercury and Brian May playing Scrabble together, it will take Brian May's head and Freddie Mercury's head and mix them together, and you'll end up with strange mixes of Brian May and, and uh, Freddie Mercury um, in the image. Uh, and you go, well, that's not what I wanted, but it's kind of interesting, which is the general reply from um, a lot of mid playing playing arounds. And when I talk about Wombo to anybody in Mid-Journey, they think, they, they're, they're like, don't mention that program's name like it's evil, you know. And the reason is, is because they figure that it's wasted time to mess around with Wombo. But I like Wombo. And I'm really just going around experimenting with a lot of AI art programs to see what their advantages are. Um, Starry AI, um, I'm even dealing with porn generators like there's one called um porn pen.ai i think it's called and it's it's the more ethical version of um ai art porn generators because well it's the only one i've seen um that really specializes in that but the source of the images uh you can't you can't give it somebody's image and use them in the porn so it's um, ethical in that it generates pictures of people who don't exist and it makes porn out of it you know and so you're not really it's not really breaking the law or anything um it's it's generating um synthesized porn is what it's doing and um you can also just generate stuff that isn't porn but um it's going to produce females or males doing you know whatever or showing their muscles or showing their bust or whatever and it also do the all the porn um positions and stuff but you're not it it's kind of um it's kind of fuzzy if you're a christian it's kind of fuzzy to say that it's really um against what it says in the bible because these aren't real people they're synthesized and so to lust after them doesn't make any sense because um they don't exist and um so it's kind of like you could have a dream girl in there and say i'll never never know this person because this person doesn't exist it's an easy way of kind of satisfying yourself in that you can have a beautiful girl and not have to um not have to chase her down because you know she doesn't exist you know and it lets you experiment with with beauty uh which is great and um you know and then you can start making some artwork with it and stuff people say who's this model and you say i have no idea <laughs> you say you you hired the model but you don't know who she is i said no it's fake it's synthesized this is all synthesized this is all ai or you could just lie to them and say i don't know she just came into the image and then went away just like in that movie xanity you know 